Hello and welcome to part four of our Waypoint AI series. In this particular episode, we'll be adding a neat little functionality where AI can add waypoints to their list or array. This is particularly valuable from a game design standpoint, where if we have a escape game or something like that where the AI is hunting the player, if the player disappears at a location, we want the AI to be able to come back to that location and search for the player again. As always, if this video does help you, please like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. It really does help us, and we'll hop right into this. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is actually swap something in our code. So we're going to go ahead and open up new patrolling here. And right here, we have an array of the waypoints where we go through and, and iterate and travel when our AI are searching. And an array is, is pretty useful but it is not perfect for this scenario where we're adding something to this. It's a lot harder to add to an array than it is to add to a list. So luckily it's a pretty simple fix for us. So we're just gonna take away these last two, two brackets there and we're just gonna put a less than and greater than on either side and just type list prior to that. So that creates a list of game objects with the name point. And the only other thing that that changes in our code is if we scroll down here, at some point, we gathered the length of an array, uh, and for whatever reason, lists and arrays don't have the same counting name. Uh, you can't do a list.length. You actually have to do a list.count. Um, so you just swap the dot .length to dot .count, and you're good. So as far as converting that to a list, if we come back out to Unity, and we hit Play, and we swap over to our scene view, we see that nothing actually changes in our gameplay. They still function as they should. They come across the player. They go back to their waypoints. Everything is functioning just the way we had it prior to swapping it to a list, which is good because that's all we really want. So yeah, so let's head back to our code. We need to talk a little bit about when we want this change to happen. So at what point in our code do we add something that adds a waypoint? So we could add it here, where all of the AI go and attack the player. So that's the first spot that they're seen. And that, that is something potentially we could do down the road. It's actually pretty, pretty simple, and we could, we could do it. Um, but I, I feel like a better spot would be after we go through this check distance. So, so down here we have this Boolean function, where we check to see if any of the AI are within any distance of the player. And you know, if if they're not within ten units of the player, then we come back here and, and we go back to patrolling. And at that point we might like to save the last known position of the player. So what we'll go up what we'll do is we'll come up here and we're gonna create a private vector three. So vector three stores the XYZ, right? So we're gonna create a private vector three called Temp Hold. And this is just going to be a temporary hold of the last known location of the player. It's pretty simple here. We can just say temp hold is equal to, and then we just need to grab this dot transform. Nope. We need to grab a component and we're going to grab the nav mesh agent. We're going to grab the nav mesh agent of this particular AI. So this script is attached to every single AI. So we're grabbing the nav mesh component of this particular AI. And we're going to set the temporary position, the temp hold, to the current destination of the nav mesh agent right before we swap it to patrolling and that destination changes. So all we've done is we've stored the last known location of the AI into a temporary vector 3 where we can access it later if we so choose. So if we come down here, we actually need to create a class for this. We're gonna create a class called add waypoints. This is actually gonna be fairly simple code, but it's gonna add great functionality to, to our AI. So let's do avoid add waypoints. And this is just gonna be a function where we add to the waypoint array. So what do we need to do in here? We need to add an empty game object into our scene. So if we go back to our scene and we look at our waypoints, we see that they're scattered alarm around the, the scene. 
and they're really just empty game objects at these locations. So in our code, we don't actually care what they're called. We don't actually care that they're put into some type of organized fashion in the hierarchy. We just care about the memory reference of the game object. Since we swap to a list, we can just add it to the list all in one line. It's super neat, super clean, and we don't have to worry about organization here. Like We don't have to add it to the waypoints thing. It'll just show up as a game object, and, and we'll be good with that. So let's say that we're looking at our list of points here, and we want to add. So this is why we swap to a list, because add is one of the functions of a list, and it's, it's very nice. We just want to create a new game object at that location. So if if I open up this this drop down list here, we can add strings and components and a name to it, but we don't actually care about any of that. We just want to add a game object, and then we want to set the destination of that game object, right? Well, really nicely up here, where is it? Really easily up here, we stored the last known position of a player in a vector 3. Well, that's great for us because we just need to grab the last point added to the points list and set its destination, its position, to the temporary position of the last known position of the player. So we can go to points and we'll say... Well, we really want the index of the last known one, so that's points.count. And since count starts at 1, we want to do count minus 1, right? Uh, indexes start at 0, counts and lengths start at 1. So we want count minus 1. And more specifically, we want the transform of that. And we want to set the position of that equal to the temporary vector 3 that we grabbed earlier. So now, when we come here, we set this to temp hold. We're going to go ahead and call this function here. We add the waypoints. We set this, we grab the last known position of the player. We call this add waypoints. It creates a game object and it sets the position of that game object to the last known position of the player. It's super important that this function comes after this temple. Otherwise, you'll get a null error, and we don't want that. So let's go ahead and save, and we will test this out. So right now, when we go into our scene, we have our player here, and the AI are patrolling just like they normally should. Everything's great. Everything's dandy. If I bring the player into range of any of the AI, they all start chasing them. And as we can see here on the hierarchy, there's no change yet. There's, if I expand everything, just, just to be clear, there is no change yet. No game objects have been created. If I pause this and move this AI out and we iterate to our next frame, we see that there's three new game objects have been created. These are the locations of the AI based on the chase positions of the players, where they last saw the player, since none of them are within 10 units of the AI, they all add a waypoint, and it's now been added to their waypoint cluster. So if I go to AI group 1, we see that we now have a fifth element of this list called new game object. AI cluster 2, same deal. And if I hit unpause, swap back to scene view, we'll see that Eventually, when they get to their spot, look, see, he just went to that, that waypoint here. They're all going to this waypoint, and then they're going back and pathing back to their original position in their patrol. And just to prove that it works one last time, if I come here and see them again, and then fly out of range, we see that yet again we get more game objects. The AI are just adding to this list. Nothing changes, they get more ways to see, more places to check. So like if you're hiding under a table and you know they lose sight of you, the nav mesh agent starts to patrol again, um, but they'll, they'll come back and check the table because that was the last place that I saw you. And that's a really great functionality of an AI. It makes it seem like they're learning with you. And last but not least, I just want to say if you hit 
play again, you'll notice that since all those things were created while Unity is in play, none of them are stored afterwards, which is pretty great, because then that means every playthrough of your game is a little bit different than the previous. If you lose sight of them down here, that's where the extra waypoint will be. If you lose sight of them up here, that's where the extra waypoint will be. And that type of dynamic interchange is what makes a game really fun. If we wanted to add waypoints at the, the place where we first saw the player, we can do so right here. We almost essentially copy this code. And right underneath here where we attack the player, we set this. And actually, I mean, this should work 9 times out of 10. Uh, but just in case it doesn't get through this function before it gets to this line of code, we can just change this just a little bit. We can just say player dot transform dot position. Either way it should work, but just in case, it's a little bit safer for us to just set that to the player dot transform dot position. So it will only add the waypoint of the current player position right when you first see the player. So for some AI, this will be a little bit different, right? They're not patrolling. This should only add the waypoint to the one that spots the AI. And that's just a little bit little bit more detail that, that messes around with our AI just a little bit. So here, if I come to our scene view, and I get spotted here, you'll notice that there's only one new game object. Only one of these AI, specifically AI group three, this guy, has the new waypoint added. He spotted the player right here, so he added that to his waypoint. If I come to the player and move it down here, they're all moving with me. I'm not going anywhere crazy. And then I zoom off. They all add waypoints down here, but the only one that comes up here to double check is the one that originally spotted at that location. That's just another little way to add a little bit more intelligence to your AI, fool the player a little bit more into thinking that the AI is he, here he is. He went up there to check. Now he comes down here. They all come to check the place where they last were. As always, if this has helped you, please consider liking, comment, subscribing. It really does help us. If you haven't already, check the link in the description below for our Discord. You can join that. We have a really great help channel. We have a bunch of people who are really interested in game design. We also have a Twitch. You can find a link to that in the description, but we will also post that in our Discord. So if you're interested in that at all, you'll be able to find it on our Discord or in the description below. Also, if you do get the time, please feel free to check out our app on the App Store. It's called Blastoff. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check it out. I hope this helps. Next week, we're going to start on a new AI, particularly a race AI. Should be a lot of fun. I hope you'll join me for it, and hopefully I'll see you next week.